Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Today, we're gonna be working on the 240. All right, I never filmed it, but I fabricated this uh, upper radiator support to make room for these Doral fans. I wanna say they're like four inches thick. And with you having the V8 and the S chassis, I mean, there ain't no room. I had to do this. Um, so when I fabricated this, I put everything together and I start driving it. And as you can tell, I never painted this, so all this surface rust has accumulated. Every time my boy Brian come over, I mean, he always give me a hard time about the rust that I haven't painted. So we're gonna try to kill two birds in one stone. What we're gonna try to do is remove all this stuff. Uh, when I say all this stuff, radiator, radiator fans, front bumper, uh, my tr uh, trans fan, all that stuff, because regardless, we need to get this thing ready to start fabricating. But also, two is I got a whole different accessory drive. Um, so I'll show you what accessory drive I pick when we get to that point. But first things first, let me just start dismantling all this. So it gives you a good example of what I did and what I didn't do. So all this is rusted, all this got to be cleaned up. Uh, a couple spots there got to be clean and both of these corners here. This right here is the assortment of stuff that I'm gonna attempt to use to get the job done. Got a bunch of random like sanding discs, stainless steel wire brushes, a little bit coarser grit, Kind of like some flat wheel type stuff. And then I got this like little roll of sandpaper. I've never used this before, but uh, with a combination of all these, I should be able to get that knocked out. So let me go ahead and get started. tech tip when you use one of these that's got that stainless steel bristle on it make sure you wear some protective eye equipment and if you're scared put something on your arm see that yeah that little jump man be coming out like little bombs and stuff man it's sticking your meat and have you all jacked up so be careful okay be careful check out everything All right, um, I checked in my cabinet. I do not have what I need, so I'm gonna need to run to the parts store real quick. And then when I get back, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about as far as what I need. Wow, that's what I need to go pick up from the parts store, self-etching primer. This stuff right here is what is recommended uh, to put on bare metal before you apply the color. So uh, let me go ahead and tape everything off. And we're gonna spray this stuff on the front of the 240. That's what the self-etching primer looked like. It's got like an army green tint. Put two coats on. Now it's time to put that black on there. Everything is black and glossed over. So next, we got to go ahead and start disassembling everything. We got to remove the crank pulley. We got to remove the water pump power steering and uh, basically remove this old bracketry kit so that we can go ahead and install our new kit. Wow! Look at 
look how naked everything is. So now let me show you the accessory drive kit that we're gonna choose for our Turbo LS 240 build. What we have here is the ICT billet um, accessory kit made in the good USA. They have a tremendous amount of different accessory kits as far as where you wanna put the alternator, where you wanna put the power steering, um, whether or not you have something like a Corvette harmonic balancer or a truck harmonic balancer. So if you guys are wondering what kit I have, this is the kit part number here. And the cool thing about this kit is, is everything is packaged pretty nice. And it also has like measurement tool on the side of it. You got inches on this side and then you got everybody else standard on this side. So uh, we're using a truck harmonic balancer. And what we're also doing is, is we're putting the power, the uh, alternator uh, up high into the driver's side. And might I add, another reason why I like their stuff is everything is in pictures. So for those people that have a hard time reading like myself, hey, going back to elementary school. So the first step is two of these Allen, um, these Allen bolt head, 60 millimeter in length uh, bolts, which I have both there. And it looks like we got four spacers that are roughly a little bit over an inch. And of course, we also got this bracket here. And according to that picture, you got that indention there and then you got this recessed section. Let's go ahead and install that. And it looked like these two right here they want to sit back behind here somewhere, but they ain't got no bolts to install it yet. But according to the picture, these, the rest of the two of these spacers are gonna go uh, behind that bolt and behind that bolt. All right, looks like step two, we're gonna be using this second gold bracket, two of the 120 millimeter bolts. And then we also got three more spacers, which uh, looks like they're, they're the last three spacers. And a little tip when you're installing this particular kit, um, like I said, you got the state spacers behind these two bolts, and then they want you to put the spacers behind uh, behind there, and there is no bolts. So what uh, what I figured out is, is run these in, these two bolts, run them in almost all the way, and then what you do is uh, take your hand, set that one spacer there, tighten that one up, and that'll uh, put force on that side, and then basically repeat the same process on this side. Put it, put that spacer back behind here and then tighten up that. And as you can tell, they're staying in place. Now on to step three, the three spacers gonna go here, here, them three spots there. And then we got the two bolt holes that are going through here. So let's go ahead. And they actually got it recessed. So you know where it goes. Spacer and spacer. Hold on, let me get my right socket for that. It's a 13. Pull that in. According to the diagram, this spacer goes in between here. All right, now we're on to step three. And uh, step three looked like it got a lot going on. As they call it a smooth pulley. We got this blue spacer that goes behind that pulley. So that's gonna fit in, fit in there like that. Boom, 110 millimeter bolt. So that's gonna be this one. And it looks like they're saying that there's supposed to be a thick washer as well. That's the thick washer. Sits on the top like so. That bolt is gonna go through the middle like that. Set that to the side. And now it looks like we have two nuts. And it looks like we got two 80 millimeter, 80 millimeter bolts. So that's that. It looks like also in step three, I'm gonna need my alternator. So let me go ahead and grab it real quick. We got this here. Looks like it's gonna go in there like that. 
And when I do final assembly, I'm probably gonna throw a little uh, anti-seize on all this stuff, cause this is aluminum, and I don't want this stuff to gall up on me. I don't know, I feel like there should be a spacer in between there. And then the two hardware that they want us to use, this is what's gonna hold the alternator up. It appears that these two holes right here is where it's gonna sit. So, all right, I messed up. This spacer right here, hold on, let me get it out. That makes sense. Remember I said I thought that that spacer, there should be a spacer down in between there? Well, guess what? They were right and I was right. And now we can put the alternator in. Put the nuts on there. And the last step, which is step number four, there were three pieces of hardware left over. And those are used to install our LS1 power steering pump, which I do have. Wow, look at the finished product. I want to say that uh, the idle to pulley or whatever you call it. Let, hold on one second, let me grab it. All right, according to the picture, I need to have that piece there. And you look at that, I mean, they basically look the same except for the pulley is a different design. And then you come over here to this side of the head, you got the three bolt holes, but they don't line up. So I'm gonna have to send them jokers a request. I mean, not a request. I'm gonna have to send them a message and be like, yo, what am I missing? All right, looking a little closer on that, it looks like this bottom part, which is right here, goes to the little stud on the water pump. So. Oh, maybe it's like something that goes right there, maybe. Yeah, so I bet you I could put money on it. I think I'm gonna need a water pump. And if you look right there on my old setup, I cut that off. And I think that's exactly, it's supposed to go just like that. And I cut that thing off. Um, if I wouldn't have cut that off, I could, easy, I could bolt up this and bolt that up and it probably wouldn't be a problem. So it looks like I'm gonna need a new uh, water pump which I mean, they're pretty cheap, but the main reason I want to check this kit or go ahead and install it is because I want to make sure my power steering pump clears the hood. If you kind of get it level, I mean, it looked like it might not clear. So let me, let me try to close the hood real quick. I've already cut the webbing out on that side. Um, when I had my RB25 with a big Borg Warner S366 on it, I had to notch that out. It looks like I got a little bit more to notch out, but I am happy. Um, the hood is completely closed. And if all I gotta do is notch out just a little smidge more of that weapon on that hood, man, I am good. So I consider this a success. All we need is a water pump. We do need the belt. And I'll put that belt part number at the bottom. I think it's determined whether or not you're using the alternator I have or if you're using a 140 or 160 amp alternator. I think they say you need to have like a half an inch longer belt on that part number that I'm putting down below, which I may end up doing that daggone alternator to be honest with you, because I got a lot of more electronics I'm adding on this thing. But uh, in the meantime, uh, that's it. That's how we're gonna install uh, this accessory drive kit on our LS and our 240. And, um, once again, thank you guys for chiming in, and we will see you on the next episode.